Let them talk. And welcome to Let Them Talk. And I'm Paul DiRienzo. We have a great show, as usual, uh, lined up. And uh, we're going to talk about Jules Verne, one of my great heroes of my childhood and today, and the play from, well, this presentation from Earth to the Moon. So uh, uh, Don Sanders is the director, and he's here. And uh, we've had folks in the past that you might know from, uh, 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 like my, I keep remembering the letters, but from the uh, uh, the Romantic Century, right? What the, Let me get it right. The... Uh, uh, the ERC, right? The Correct. And what ensemble is ensemble for the romantic sort of like century. Ensemble it's a for the romantic century, right? <laughs> Just I think romantic. Right. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I think romantic. <laughs> and uh, we've we've done a few programs on the work you guys have done, which is amazing theatrical presentations of important people from history, and using the music of the time and. Uh, and in this case, uh, I'm going to just show the. This is amazing. Jules Verne from Earth to the Moon, and uh, it's a. It's imagine Nellie Bly. You see, you'll, you'll tell us the history of it. We'll go to that right in a minute. And uh, and this is playing uh, coming up. It's playing starting next uh, next week. Um, and we'll give you the dates and times: April eighth, 9th, tenth, and the twelfth um, at BAM, the Brooklyn Academy of Music. And you can get more information on RomanticCentury.org, and we'll tell you more about that later on. So, uh, uh, thanks for joining us uh, and uh, for coming on to tell us about the work you're doing. Uh, for this presentation. So tell us a little bit about, I mean, I don't want to tell, I love Jules Verne, but I want you to tell us about Jules Verne. Why Why is Jules Verne an interesting person? What did he do for right. people who might have been on another planet for <laughs> 250 years? Yes, right, right. Uh, well, first of all, it's great to be here, Paul. Thanks. Thank you for coming. And uh, yeah, Jules Verne wrote 74 novels. And uh, yeah, 74 novels. And of course, the ones that probably the viewers know best are Around the World in 80 Days, uh, 20,000 Leaves Beneath the Sea, uh, and actually from uh, the Earth to the Moon. How I many were made into movies? Uh, I think I, I, those are the ones I know about. I would many be surprised were made that into many movies. Were made into and movies. theatrical presence, and and theatrical including the first movie, pretty yes. much the first true movie ever made. That's right, that's right. <laughs> the Meles, the George Meles movie. Yes. Um, and what's interesting about Fern, he was born in 1828, he died in 1905, and uh, this theatrical production, uh, which is taken from the novel, it's an adaptation of the novel, From the Earth to the Moon, was actually published in 1865. And in it, he predicted the first landing of a spaceship on the moon. He predicted that it would happen, and that it would be done by America, by Americans, and that the rocket that sent it into orbit would be launched from Florida from Cape Canaveral. So in 1865, <laughs> he knew he knew the score. Amazing, he knew the score. Yeah, he knew the score. And he was a, such an extraordinary literary genius, uh, which was backed up by a lot of scientific knowledge, obviously. Mm -hmm. But he, um, uh, he, he started out uh, learning to be a lawyer. I came from a haute bourgeois family. And when he got to Paris, he was seduced into the theater. This is a part that people don't really know. And he Very wrote radical plays. in France at that time, yeah, right? Exactly. And they don't call it the left there, bank for absolutely. nothing. Absolutely. Right? And uh, so he got involved in that. And, you know, when uh, I was rereading From the Earth to the Moon, I was struck with what a totally contemporary novel it is. It's very funny. It mm -hmm. could have been, it could be uh, almost like candy or, uh, or <laughs> right. something that Stanley Kubrick would or, have written. Right. It's very, very funny. He was very so, much ahead of his time. And, and very deep and serious because, in actual fact, in the end, the rocket goes off. And, but it doesn't quite hit its target, and it stays, it's uncertain at the end of the novel, uh, like a lot of things in life, what will happen to the uh, uh, scientists, uh, and the, the uh, moon men in the rocket. And so he even, it's Apollo 13 exactly. is even, he did. you know, he what did. would happen if you failed and you were exactly. still trapped in space? And so it, we're left thinking that the least that can happen is that they will be a new planet orbiting the moon. <laughs> But this production is uh, really focuses on this amazing writer and his legendary meeting with another character out of the 19th century, Nellie Bly. Right, whose picture we see here. These are real people who really existed. That's a true photograph of Jules Verne, and that's a true photograph of Nellie Bly. And tell us a little bit about Nellie Bly, because she's Nellie a very Bly fascinating was, character. I'm going to say, I'm going to characterize yeah. her as, yeah. the, uh, as the first really muckraking uh, female journalist. She, uh, she, she goes on this trip 
to challenge, to beat the fictional record of Phileas Fogg as a promotion mm -hmm. for the world, which was a newspaper at the time. But prior that to that- truly happened. And truly happened. It truly right. happened. She and went Phineas and Fogg, him. for people, again, who have been asleep for 200 years, was... <laughs> the main character, the protagonist in Around the World in 80 Days. Which uh, is when somebody tries to go around the world in 80 right. days, which was unusual, like would be yes. un unheard An of. Unbelievable feat. He also predicted that that could happen, which is why he wrote the novel. And he used his uh, calculations to show that it could happen. And actually, Nellie beat him by uh, two days when she actually did, I mean, the fictional record. Right, the fictional record she beat in she, reality in it, 1905 right. in, around. Uh, 1889. 1889, she did <laughs> 1889. it in two days. She, she beat it, that, she a did. feat, and a she woman did. at she that did. going And a woman, and a woman, with one dress. Before. With one dress, one coat, one handbag. <laughs> that's how you had to travel light. The and one hat. <laughs> it's called traveling light. That's because how I travel. That's right. She realized she couldn't take anything with her because she didn't want to be slowed down. Right. So uh, it's a wonderful, and she, the meeting between them, she, on her trek, she stops in Amiens, which is- In real of, life. In real life, in Amiens to, to pay homage to Vern, and they meet for a couple of hours. They have a uh, toast, a toast of champagne or liqueur at his house. And he, he loves her. He falls, well, I would say, madly in love with her. But yes, he does. And his wife, Honorine, she starts by being skeptical. And then she, because she doesn't think a woman can do such mm -hmm. a job. Right. And at the end, she says she's one of the most remarkable people about Nellie Bly. And uh, Nellie Bly began her career uh, by having herself, uh, uh, um, well, committed to the insane asylum that used to occupy Blackwell's Island, which mm -hmm. is now uh, Roosevelt Island, and because she was concerned about the conditions uh, for the insane, and she uh, was successful in um, acting her way in, and she stayed there for several months, and she repro reported back uh, to the world, and so her um, uh, reportage really changed people's understanding about uh, the mentally ill, etc. She was really quite a character. Mm -hmm. it, it really so a real New York person. character, too. A real New York character, She's although like, she was from Pittsburgh. <laughs> right, right, but she did it in New York, and she did it for the New York world. And, uh, that's right. And it's a, well, that's what's great about New York, is it's, yes. uh, it's those like myself who actually yeah. were born and it, raised here, but also yeah. all the people who are attracted right. by Absolutely. us <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> to live here and to, and to become the center of, of everything. But this is a music theater piece. It's an, enter it's an entertainment. Uh, it's, I think, a really unique, wonderful piece which has live classical music and Americana music, the banjo, Stephen Porter, uh, Louis Gottschalk, uh, mixed with French music from the 19th century, Cécile Chaminade, who was a female French composer, really great, great composer and not as exposed. So it's really fitting that her music should be with Nellie because Nellie mm -hmm. uh, was very much for votes for women. Uh, she predicted that women would have the vote by 1920, which they did, and she died in 1922. So uh, it's a beautiful entertainment at BAM. Uh, in the beautiful BAM Theater. And we have stars who play uh, the major roles. So Jules yeah. Verne. You tell us. Yes, is played by Jonathan Hadari, uh, who uh, has had a wonderful career. I first saw Jonathan when he played Herbie in the Broadway revival of Gypsy. <laughs> wow. So. And, uh, and Madame Verne, Honorine, is played by Jane Atkinson, who viewers will recognize as playing the Secretary of State in House of Cards. And uh, Nellie Bly is played by Samantha Hill, who is currently the cassette in uh, the Broadway production of Les Mis. And so they sing, they dance, and then we have wonderful instrumentalists. And it's this interesting, interesting uh, theatrical music theater piece uh, that is quite unique. We think Ensemble for the Romantic Century is uh, is a specially entertaining and beautiful form. Uh, our last production uh, in the spring uh, last year of an Oscar Wilde piece was described as uh, it, uh, beautiful and deeply moving. So it's this combination of very, very wonderful music with a, a play, with a theatrical presentation, which is often based right. using the real words of these characters, the real writing from, uh, from the Earth to the Moon, 
Right, and, and as you've just been describing, the music that you find is so well researched, and the musicology yes, behind Absolutely. it all, it's, as we've discovered, it really brings to life that era and the time yes, it and does. the people. It does. Right, and where and when will this be? It is. It opens uh, a week from tomorrow, so it, on April eighth, Wednesday night, April eighth at seven thirty at the uh, Bam Fisher Fishman Theater, and it plays for six performances. So the eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, and twelfth. There's a matinee on Saturday, eleventh, and the Sunday, the twelfth, is at a matinee. As well at two o'clock. And people can hear, learn more. They can. They can go to BAM.org. Easy to remember. <laughs> B-A-M dot O-R-G. Right. And uh, look us up for tickets. And you also Come. have your own uh, uh, website. We do, which is RomanticCentury.org. Okay, Ensemble for the Romantic, romantic yeah. Century. Yes. Uh, let's go, let's watch. We have a, a, a clip on, on, on uh, ready to come up, and why don't we just play a few minutes of that, and then we'll come back and talk some more. Terrific. So let's go, let's go to the video. come back to that in a minute and see more of it. Uh, so we were w looking at watching uh, Jules Verne from Earth to the Moon, the ensemble uh, for the Romantic Century, and uh, the director of this presentation is here with us, Don Sanders, and welcome to Let Them Talk. Um, so we were discussing, so th th those are, um, uh, this is a play basically about a meeting between Nellie Bly, the famous uh, New York World muckraking journalist yes. who went around the world in 80 days to recreate yes. one of Jules Verne's great books, Around the World in 80 right. Days. Yes. And 
uh, but it's in terms of where does the moon come into it? How does the moon come into it? The moon comes into it because um, he is uh, working on, we, we, we sort of cross-reference time, we play a little with time as the theater gets a chance to do, uh, and he's working on his novel From the Earth to the Moon because that's his interest at mm -hmm. the moment. And, uh, and it was an interesting kind of, uh, contrast and connection to the daringness of this 24-year-old. Nellie Bly was only 24 years old, and, and, and it was a great contrast to have the adventure of people going to the moon parallel the adventure of a single 24-year-old woman going around the world in 80 days. <laughs> right, right, and, and it's interesting because in a way it's almost one, because she's doing this and then she arrives yes. and then he's already thinking of going way beyond yes, the Earth yes. to going to the exactly, moon, right? Exactly, exactly. Right? And we were discussing how uh, 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 Jules Verne was very much ahead of his time. Yes, and, he was. And uh, he also projected, uh, predicted the uh, nuclear submarine. Yes, he did. To the point where the first nuclear yes. submarine was named after the, his correct. nuclear yes. submarine, the Nautilus, yes. Yes. right? Yes. And in the play, it's interesting, and I would like to say about the play musical concert, it's a, a you know, it's a hybrid, a wonderful hybrid. It's part uh, music and part theater. It's mm -hmm. many of the words and the lines in the play are actually documentary, so that has another mm -hmm. quality. They're something they were actually that, he, said. that he actually said. Yeah. And, um, in the, he comes to grips with the fact that he feels passed over in French literature. Uh, and it's an interesting, for somebody who wrote 74 books, and books that have been so, uh, had so much influence on everything, on our uh, sci-fi, <laughs> you know, he could yeah. be called the father of sci-fi, uh, that, that he felt that he wasn't kept, looked at in the same light as, say, Flaubert or Balzac or some of the other writers of his generation. Mm -hmm. And that's an interesting, because to my, being, being a guy who grew up on pop, the pop mm -hmm. uh, explosion, right. you know, in the art world, uh, I think of him as being very pop in a certain way. He was able, in this amazing imagination, to, to dare to talk about scientific uh, subjects. He needed a Mr. Spock. Yes, we were he talking did. about Leonard Nimoy. He needed <laughs> he Leonard Nimoy. He yes. needed a Mr. Spock he character did. to yes. make it to bring he, it yes. down to people because, yes. uh, in a way, he his style of fiction foresaw Star Trek because yes, that's what did. Star Trek yes. is. It's Absolutely. all based on Absolutely. real science. I mean, yes. the, um, there's even a book and a, uh, and a documentary, The Science of Star Trek, yes. in yes. which. Scientists like Mishukaku and others discuss yes. the possibility of beaming people and yes. light, fashion light speed and things like yes, that. Yes. And uh, that could be the, and also predicting many of the things that were in Star Trek, like the communicator, right. which we thought was so amazing in right. 1968, is today our cell phone, yes. which is way more powerful <laughs> than anything they had I know, in 1968 I know, I in, the fu in the alleged future. Right? <laughs> He has a wonderful line, for, and, and it is in the production. He says something to the effect that um, whatever anybody can imagine they would want will happen. <laughs> you just have to imagine it, right? Yes, exactly. And that's what happens, right? And uh, uh, so, and I think, I hope viewers can tell from the, uh, the video, this is also a very multimedia production, very, very mm -hmm. extraordinary um, projections mm -hmm. accompany it along with the wonderful music. Sure. And uh, it's, it, it's great to be at the BAM Theater because that the theater can accommodate this wonderful technology. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's, it's, it's great. We all feel a little bit like Vern where we have these tools <laughs> right, to right. play with in the oh, theater that we often don't. I hope so. <laughs> he would have loved <laughs> it, I'm he sure. He would have loved what you're doing, He might right? want to jump up on the stage and be Vern himself <laughs> he, because he had worked in the theater. Oh, really? And interesting, yeah, in the say. piece, in the show, there's uh, an aria or a piece uh, mm -hmm. from uh, his, there was an operetta written by Offenbach, the famous French uh, writer of composer of operettas, which he, which about from uh, uh, adapted from the Earth to the Moon, and we have that piece, one of the famous arias right. in it in the well, show. The, the romantic sung by right. sung by uh, uh, Samantha Hill. <laughs> right, right. Uh, let's go. Who who would they gave some different names up there? So tell us, yes. from, tell yes. people who's going to be so, there. Yes, we, uh, we've got a wonderful cast, and Jules Verne is played by Jonathan Hadari, uh, one of our really best American actors, and uh, uh, the role of Madame Verne, Honorine. His wife is played by Jane Atkinson uh, from uh, the House of Cards, who plays the Secretary of State, <laughs> so yeah. quite a stretch. Great cast, yeah. <laughs> yes, and Samantha Hill plays Nellie Bly, and Samantha is uh, a cassette 
and Les Mis. And uh, so that's great, and we have wonderful musicians. Uh, that's what's great about being in New York, of course, because we have access to all the great musicians. And the design mm -hmm. is also outstanding. The set and costumes are by Vanessa James, an Emmy Award winner. Beverly Emmons does the lighting. She was the first woman to win a Tony Award for uh, the Broadway production of Amadeus, and also did uh, the very famous Einstein on the Beach, about the Robert Wilson piece. And uh, the videos are by David Bengali, an excellent, excellent artist. So it's, you know, this is a kind of, like the music, we have combined mm -hmm. the old, right. the new, <laughs> right, right, right. the modern, the this. We consider, right. ERC is really, I like to describe it as post-everything. It's <laughs> post-modern, post <-everything. laughs> Right, right, right. It's very interesting. We, we, you know, we've had various, uh, 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 we've had James Mello here yes. a couple times, yeah. and now we've had you in, yeah. and we've always, it's always very interesting to learn uh, about the history of music and how yes. the, the music, how you yes. can communicate the ideas of time through the music yes. and how a musicologist yes. would go about researching that. And well, ERC and Eve Wolf, who wrote this piece and also plays the piano in it, uh, is the founder of, of, of ERC. And she had this idea, really, you know, when the whole uh, fashion for yeah. having uh, lectures before concerts, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and people would listen to a lecture that was exciting and everything, and then they go into a concert hall that, you know, concert hall, I love them, but they're not theatrically lighted. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So there would be all this excitement generated by the history of the composers and, mm -hmm. and the period and everything, and then you go in, and that, so you'd hear the music. Right. So she thought, wouldn't it be great to try to combine, to not only try, but to succeed in combining right. those two elements, and that's really what ERC right. is. Yeah. You actually learn something when you come yes, out of it. You yes. learn a lot. And, yep. and uh, every time we have, like, you, we learn about Jules Verne and yes. Nellie Bly, <laughs> we learn about Oscar Wilde yes. and Tchaikovsky yes. and all these Tchaikovsky. things. Tchaikovsky, yeah. yes, We've absolutely. learned while we've been here. Yes. So it's wonderful. Thank you so much for that. And tell us when and where yes. it is. So we open uh, a week from tomorrow uh, on Wednesday, April 8th at 7.30 mm -hmm. at the BAM Fisher Fishman Theater. And we have six performances, which is great at BAM. Uh, so we're Wednesday the 8th, Thursday the 9th, Friday the 10th, Saturday the 11th, and Sunday the 12th. And those are all uh, the, the uh, Wednesday through Saturday are at 7.30. The Saturday has an additional 2 o'clock matinee, and the final show on Sunday the 12th is a matinee as well at 2 o'clock. And, and where can... The tickets can be had by that wonderful, easy to remember, BAM.org. You right. can go to BAM.org and buy tickets for this. All right, great, cool. And uh, let's go, we have a, we have a, let, let's play another couple of minutes of the video and then come back in the last minute to say goodbye. So let's do that now.
79 days, she would have accomplished a marvelous exploit. Each day gained, in fact, will be a, a personal triumph for her. <laughs> façon, l'idée est magnifique. <laughs> May, visit, Jules, Verne, in France, if he can do so without losing time. Jules! She, 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 she's coming to see you. <laughs> November 14, 1889. At 9.40 and 30 seconds o'clock, I started on my tour around the world. And so, if folks want to see this, where do they have to go to see this? They go to bam.org, B-A-M.org. Right. And it's next week. And starting it's next week. It, next week. It opens on Wednesday, April 8th for six right. performances. We're All very right. proud of it. Great. Very, I'm sure. And uh, it's fascinating. I just uh, I love the, the image that you guys have here, Jules Verne, From Earth to the Moon. And it's the story of the meeting of the great New York world uh, muckraking journalist, uh, the 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 woman, the mother of muckraking journalism, you know, who really invented it. You know, when I think of how many people have done <laughs> since then what she did yeah. and act like it was the newest <clears throat> thing in the world, how Hunter S. Thompson snuck into that in in Las Vegas and he yes. sneaks into a convention yes. and brings yes. back that story and yes. writes a book about it, and we right. think that he was the first person who right. invented it. No, but no, she was there. She was there a <laughs> hundred years before. Her real name was Elizabeth Cochran. She uh -huh. came from Pittsburgh. Yeah. And she took the nom de plume of uh, Nellie Bly and right. made it famous uh, for right. all time. And it's fascinating the story you were telling about how she started her career by actually going into Blackwell's Island, yes. the, the, which you can see now is still the ruins of it on yes. Roosevelt Island, yes. and made believe she was a mental patient right. so she could report on the horrific conditions yes. there. Yes. So, and that was long before... Uh, um, the, the the TV news host uh, yes. did that. Uh, well, I can't right. think of his name right now, but uh, we all know who we're talking about, right? right? Or I think of Frederick Weissman. Have you ever seen the Titty Cut Follies, which was a great film made yeah. inside of right, right. a mental institution? Very yeah, good. So she certainly. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Thank you, Paul. <laughs>